Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another episode of the show. And um, so, do another wine. And this particular wine uh, was, well, it was actually the second to last wine I was buying, but I was going, I was at the HEB, I was at the local grocery store, and um, I was picking up the wine. If you get six wines or more, they give you a 10% discount on your purchase. So I was looking for wine number six, and uh, this was actually wine number seven, by the way. But, um, but I was looking for wine number six, so I'm in the aisle, and <clears throat> I saw this, you know, Francis Ford Coppola, and I've not only really intentionally avoided Coppola, but most of the Coppola wines are are in the fifteen to twenty or dollar more range, so they're kind of outside of the the main focus of the show, and uh, I also try to stay away from uh, the quote bigger names. I like to try to find the, the other things that are hopefully a hidden gem type of deal. But anyway, so I'm looking for a wine and I, I decided, you know what, this is in the price range and I'm gonna take a look at it and what do you know, there was another customer in there as I pulled the wine off the, off the shelf, she goes, I was looking for that. And then I'll stop the story there. All right, so let's do this. This is the 2007 Francis Ford Coppola Presents uh, Rosso and I forgot to get the printout thingy. I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, you saw it. <laughs> I do this in the morning. And you think every news newscaster wears dress pants? All right, so anyway, um, this is a blend of uh, three varietals. So the reason I printed this out is because, what do you know, they give you at the website, even though it's not on the, on the label, so props to Cobla for doing this. Um, anyway, it is a 44% Zinfandel, 34% Syrah, 22% Cabernet Sauvignon, um, and what else did I put on here? Uh, we'll just go through the wine and then I'll do some little history stuff. All right, $8.99 at our local huge big chain supermarket, pretty much the only supermarket left in San Antonio, uh, HEB, and they're all over, well, at least south and central Texas and also in eastern, southeastern part of Texas. So let's check it out. All right, the nose is pretty good. I like it. I haven't even started tasting it yet. All right, so enough of the smelling here. <laughs> um, I'm getting some some dark red fruits, uh, maybe maybe a hint of chocolate. Hint of spice to it. Definitely like it. Let's see how it tastes.
Okay, so before I go into exactly what I'm tasting, the intent of this wine is to be a table wine. Nothing, it's not meant to be anything like super spectacular. It's meant to be a good wine, everyday drinking wine um, that you can enjoy on a Wednesday night, um, on a school night. And uh, it's, it's not, you know, it's not meant to be like a special occasion wine. All right, so with that said, this tastes like a lot of other wines. And it's not bad, I mean, as a matter of fact, I like it. I like it, it's a flavor profile that I like. It's got a little bit of sweetness. It's got a little spice in it. Um, I kind of get a little, of, little bit of pepper. Um, it's, it's good wine. It's, it's tasty, it's, it's gonna, you know, most people are gonna like it now. Let's get back to the story. So when I asked, um, when I asked this customer in the aisle, why do you like this wine? And she said, it's not too sweet, it's not too dry. And I said, so it's easy drinking. She's like, yeah, and you know what, it is. And she really likes this wine. Um, and I do too. I mean, you know what, for $9, I mean, I would love to see if it was maybe, a, maybe $7, maybe a couple hours cheaper maybe eight dollars because I think there's other seven and eight dollar bottles of wine that that are gonna taste as good as this one but um, for nine dollars if you want to buy a couple bottles to have around so that if you're gonna have something that is gonna go well with this type of wine or you just want to have some wine just to drink this is a wine you could drink on its own you don't need food with it you don't need to have it with dinner um, if you want it if you're gonna have like some salami sandwiches at lunch you could drink this wine, okay? If you're gonna have a hamburger at lunch, you could drink this wine. You could probably even pair it up with hot dogs, okay? So you can have this, this could be a lunch wine, this could be a dinner wine, this could be, it's three in the afternoon and I don't have to go to work today uh, because it's Saturday and I'm off and I got nothing better to do and I'm gonna drink a glass of wine. That's what this wine is. So I think it's well made, I think it's, it's it, it will appeal to a lot of people. I'm gonna give it an 87. Now I'll give it an 88. That was the first number I thought of, and then I, then I dropped it down because I was thinking, well, it's supposed to be ordinary wine. Ordinary wine can be, you know, good wine. So 88, that was my initial thought. Um, like I said, it's not too dry, it's not too sweet. I don't get a lot of tannins hitting my mouth. I like it. I like it a lot. Now let's talk about all right, so in their in their tasting profile, just talk about the aromas: cherries, plums, cinnamon, and vanilla toasted oak. I guess some of that, yeah. Flavors: raspberry, currants, black cherries, and chocolate. I definitely can see all that in there. Um, I mean, I I, I I was gravitating more towards the cherries. You know, that that's the really the fruit, the, the dark red fruit, uh, the cherries. I guess currant. I'm not. I mean, I've had some currant, some currant jelly. Um, so it's, it's, not, it's not a big memory of mine, but I guess, yeah, I could see that. Um, not sure about the raspberries, and like I said, there was that hint of chocolate. I didn't get any vanilla toasted oak at it or cinnamon. Maybe that's what that spice was. Probably just, you know, they're, they're saying it's cinnamon. I'm, I'm taking it with just more spice in general, nothing specific. Um, yeah, good wine. A um, few things about, uh, real quickly about this. First of all, it's now while I really like that the website had this this great stuff, this great information, I love that, um, and it wasn't that difficult to find. What I did have a difficult find uh, difficulty finding is the true history of this winery, um, because when you do all your searches, what you end up getting is you get really kind of even on the web page, it, it's 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 there. They talk about Coppola's first winery, especially if you go through all these trying to find like just general information on the net about, about his winery, which mentions the old Inglenook estate, which is the uh, Kneebaum mansion on the Inglenook estate. He bought this in, in 75 or 76 um, because they wanted a quote cottage in Napa Valley to make homemade wine. Okay, I don't know about you, but a mansion is not a freaking cottage. Okay, but that's how it was described. 
they wanted a cottage to make wine. And their first wine, they they stamped the feet and all that, which is cool and it's a great family tradition. And um, but it just it made it sound, I don't know, not as much. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, I've seen the pictures of this estate. It's not a cottage. Um, but anyway, I mean, when you make the Godfather and you've got lots of money to buy stuff, I'd do the same thing. I, I just think I'd call it a cottage. Anyway, um, so they eventually called it the Rubicon Estate after, I forgot, 30 years, or maybe not 30 years, but eventually it just became called the Rubicon Estate. Um, yeah, in, in 2006 they did that. But they also bought another winery in Guyersville, um, California. This is in Sonoma County, and that's where this wine comes from. Um, even though it says, you know, even there's a division if you read the text carefully, if you're just going scanning really quickly, it was really confusing because especially how all their websites direct, you can't tell. And the other thing is, um, this winery, it's, it's easy to find out where it is as far as on the website, so if you want to go visit it and do a tasting. The other one, um, they talk about you want to come do a tasting, you want to do this. They don't tell you how to get there. They don't even give you the address of the place. I mean, really? How to like Google that? But, um, so, I mean, they make these pretty websites sometimes, but they forget the fact that you need to have information on them, not just, you know, pretty lights. Anyway, that was my little rant about uh, websites and wineries. Uh, again, I think it's a great wine. I really like it. I definitely suggest if you see it in the store, buy it, especially if you can get it for like a dollar or two cheaper. I think it makes it even that much better. But um, because, you know, we're, we're talking value wines. If I'm suggesting an everyday wine, something you want to buy several bottles of, you know, it, it, buying, you know, $50 worth versus, maybe you know, buying 30 to 40 versus $50 worth of the bottle of the wine to have around. I think that's great. All right, that's going to do it for uh, today's show. As always, make sure you click all the links. Uh, to friend me up and to subscribe to iTunes or if there's stuff you want to buy. Somebody asked me where to get the Leader Nation t-shirt. Well, we don't have the Leader Nation t-shirt yet, but we do have the 1337 wine t-shirt under the buy stuff, under swag. You can get the t-shirt. Oh, this is the blank one. Anyway, um, so you can get that. Uh, I've got some other ideas like a Leader Nation t-shirt. So don't steal that idea. And um, that's it. We'll see everybody again next time.